Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Snowflake Summit 22, live from Las Vegas, Caesars Forum. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. We've got a couple of guests here. We're going to be talking about everyday AI. You want to know what that means? You're in the right spot. Kurt Mumel joins us, the Chief Customer Officer at Data IQ, and Ahmad Khan, the Head of AI and ML Strategy at Snowflake. Guys, great to have you on the program. It's wonderful Thank to be you. here. Thank you so much. So we want to understand, Kurt, what everyday AI means. But before we do that, for the audience who might not be familiar with Data IQ, sure. give them a little bit of an overview what, about what you guys do, your mission, and maybe a little bit about the partnership. Yeah, great, uh, very happy to do so, and thanks so much for this opportunity. Um, well, Data IQ, we are a collaborative platform uh, for enterprise AI, and what that means is it's a software you know, that sits on top of incredible infrastructure, notably Snowflake, that allows people from different backgrounds, so data analysts, data scientists, data engineers, all to come together to work together to build out machine learning models and ultimately the AI that's going to be the future uh, of their business. Um, and so we're very excited to, uh, to be here uh, and you know, very proud to be a, a very close partner of Snowflake. So Ahmad, what is Snowflake's AI strategy? Is it to, is it to partner? I mean, where, do you, where do you pick up? I mean, Frank said today, we, we're not doing it all. Yeah. Ecosystem by design. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we believe in the best of breed. Look, um, I think, um, we, we think that we're the best data platform and for data science and machine learning, we want our customers to really use the best tool for their use cases, right? And, and you know, Data IQ is, is our leading partner in that space. And so, you know, when, when you talk about uh, machine learning and data science, people talk about training a model, but it's really the difficult part and challenges are really before you train the model, how do you get access to the right data? And then after you train the model, how do you then run the model? And then how do you manage the model? Uh, that's very, very important. And that's where our partnership with, with Data uh, IQ comes in place. Snowflake provides the platform that can process data at scale for the pre-processing bit. And, and Data IQ comes in and really uh, simplifies the process for deploying the models and managing the models. Got it, thank you. You talk about, Kurt, Data IQ talks about everyday AI. I want to break that down. What do you mean by that? And how is this partnership with Snowflake empowering you to deliver that to companies? Yeah, absolutely. So everyday AI for us is uh, you know, kind of a future state that we are building towards, where we believe that AI will become so pervasive in all of the business processes, all the decision making that organizations have to go through, that it's no longer this special thing that we talk about. It's just the the day-to-day -day life of, uh, of our businesses. And we can't do that without partners like Snowflake, and uh, because they're bringing together all of that data and ensuring that there is the, uh, the computational horsepower behind that to drive that. And we heard that this morning in some of the keynotes talking about that broad democratization and the, um, let's call it the, uh, you know, the pressure that that's going to put on the underlying infrastructure. Um, and so ultimately everyday AI for us is where companies own that AI capability, they're building it themselves, very broad uh, participation in the development of that, and all that work then is being pushed down into best of breed uh, infrastructure, notably, of course, Snowflake. We said push down. You, you guys, you, there's a term in the industry, push down optimization. W what does that mean? How is it evolving? Why is it so important? So, Ahmed, do you want to take a first step at that? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, when when you're, you know, processing data um, before you train a, a model, you have to do it at scale. That 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 data is is coming from all different sources. It's human generated, machine generated data. We're talking millions and billions of rows of data. Uh, and you have to make sense of it. You have to transform that data into the right kind of features, into the right kind of signals that inform the machine learning model that you're trying to uh, train. Uh, and so that's where you know, any kind of large scale data processing is automatically pushed down by Data IQ into Snowflake's scalable infrastructure. Um, so you don't get into like memory issues. You don't get into um, uh, situations where your where your pipeline is running overnight and it doesn't finish in time, right? And so uh, you can really take advantage of the scalable nature of cloud computing uh, using Snowflake's infrastructure. So a lot of that processing 
is actually getting pushed down from data IQ down into the scalable Snowflake compute engine. How does this affect the life of a data scientist? You always hear a data scientist spend 80% of their time wrangling data. Uh, I presume there's an infrastructure component around that. You're trying to, we heard this morning you're making infrastructure, my words, infrastructure self-serve. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 does this directly address that problem? And, and talk about that, and what else are you doing to address that 80% problem? It, it, it certainly does, right? Uh, that's how you solve for uh, data scientists needing to have on-demand access to computing resources, or of course to the uh, to the underlying data, um, is by ensuring that that work doesn't have to run on their laptop, doesn't have to run on some you know constrained uh, physical machines uh, in in a data center somewhere. Instead, it gets pushed down into Snowflake and can be executed at scale with incredible parallelization. Now, what's really uh, important is the ongoing development uh, between the two products. Uh, and, and within that technology. And so today Snowflake uh, announced the introduction of Python within Snowpark, um, which is really, really exciting uh, because that really opens up this capability to a much wider audience. Now, DataIQ provides that both through a visual interface um, and historically uh, since last year through Java UDFs. But that's kind of the, the two extremes, right? You have people who don't code on one side, you know, very no code or a low code uh, population, and then a very high code population on the other side. This Python uh, integration really allows us to, to touch really the kind of the, the fat center of the data science population who, uh, who for whom you know Python really is the lingua franca that they've been learning for uh, for decades now. Sure. So talking about the data scientists, I want to elevate that a little bit because you both are enterprise customers, Data IQ and Snowflake. Kurt, as the chief customer officer, obviously you're with customers all the time. If we look at the macro environment of all of the challenges, companies have to be a data company these days. If you're not, you're not going to be successful. It's how do we do that? extract insights, value, action, take it. But I'm just curious if your customer conversations are elevating up to the C-suite or, or the board in terms of being able to get democratized access to data to be competitive, new products, new services. We've seen tremendous momentum um, on, on the, the part of customers' growth on the Snowflake side, but what are you hearing from customers as they're dealing with some of these current macro pains? Yeah, no, I, I think it is the conversation today uh, at that C level is not only how do we you know leverage uh, new infrastructure, right? You know, they, they're you know, most of them now are starting to have Snowflake. I think Frank said uh, you know fifty percent of the uh, Fortune five hundred, so we can say most um, have that in place. Um, but now the question is how do we how do we ensure that we're getting access to that data to that to that computational horsepower to a broader group of people so that it becomes truly a transformational initiative and not just an IT initiative, not just a technology initiative, but really a core business initiative. And that, that really has been a pivot. You know, I've been you know, with my company now for almost eight years, right? Uh, and we've really seen a, a change in that uh, discussion going from you know, much more niche dis discussions at the team or departmental level now to truly corporate strategic level. How do we build AI into our corporate strategy? How do we really do that in practice. Yeah, we hear a lot about, hey, I, I want to inject data into apps, AI and machine intelligence in, into applications, and we've talked about, those are separate stacks. You got the data stack and analytic stack over here, you got the application development stack, the database is off in the corner, so we see you guys bringing those worlds together. And my question is, what does that stack look like? I took a snapshot, I think it was Frank's presentation mm -hmm. today. He had infrastructure at the lowest level, live data, so infrastructure is cloud. Live data, that's multiple data sources coming in. Workload execution, you made some announcements there mm -hmm. uh, to expand, expand that. Application development, that's the tooling that is needed. Uh, and then marketplace, that's how you bring together this ecosystem. Yes. Monetization is how you turn data into data products and make money. Is that the stack? Is that the new stack that's emerging here? Are you guys defining that? Absolutely, absolutely. And you talked about like the 80% of the time being spent by data scientists, and part of that is actually discovering the right data, right? Um, being able to give the right access to the right people, and being able to go and discover that data. And so, you 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 go from that angle all the way to processing, training a model, and then all those predictions and insights that are coming out of the model are being consumed downstream by data applications. And so the two major announcements I'm super excited about today is, is the ability to run Python, which is Snowpark uh, in, in Snowflake. Um, that will do, you know, you can now as a Python developer come and bring the processing to where the data lives rather than move the data out to where the processing lives, right? 
Um, so both SQL developers, Python developers fully enabled. Um, and then the predictions that are coming out of models that are being trained by Data IQ are then being used downstream by these data applications for most of our customers. And so that's where number, the second announcement with Streamlit is super exciting. I can write a complete data application without writing a single line of JavaScript, CSS, or HTML. I can write it completely in Python. It's, it makes me super excited as, as a Python developer myself. And you guys have joint customers that are headed in this direction, doing this today, where, where is, can you talk about that? Yeah, we do. Uh, you know, there's a few that we're very proud of. Um, you know, company, well-known companies like uh, like REI or Emeritus. Um, but one that was mentioned today, uh, this morning by Frank again, uh, Novartis, a uh, pharmaceutical company. You know, they have been extremely successful uh, in accelerating their AI and ML development by expanding access to their data, and that's a combination of uh, both the data IQ uh, layer, you know, uh, allowing for that work to be developed in that uh, in that workspace. Um, but of course, without you know the the underlying uh, uh, platform of Snowflake, right, they, they would not have been able to, to have re realized those, uh, those gains. And they were talking about you know, very, very significant increases in, in, in efficiency, everything from data access to the actual model development to the deployment. Um, it's just really, really, honestly inspiring to see. And it was great to see Novartis mentioned on the main stage, massive time to value there. We've actually got them on the program later this week, so that was great. Another joint customer you mentioned, REI, we'll let you go, because you're off to do a, a session with REI, is yes, that right? that's exactly right. So, uh, so we're going to be doing a fireside chat, uh, talking about, in fact, you know, much of the same, all, all of the success that they've had in accelerating their uh, analytics workflow development, uh, the actual development of AI capabilities within, uh, of course, that, uh, that beloved brand. Excellent. Guys, thank you so much for joining Dave and me, talking about Everyday AI, what you're doing together, Data IQ and stuff like to empower organizations to actually achieve that and live it. We appreciate your insights. Thank you both. Thanks, you guys. Thank you for having us. For our guests and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's live coverage of Snowflake Summit 22 from Las Vegas. Stick around. Our next guest joins us momentarily.